I'm re-uploading this video just because there were some problems in the previous video. So my apologies, I'm sorry for that. Let's jump into the video. Welcome back. In the series of creating chatbot from scratch, I'm going to add this part 4. And in this video, we are going to see how to build encoder decoder model. But before, let's quickly see how this model looks like and how it works. Alright, so let's start from the user end. First of all, user gives the input and then it is fed into the embedding layer. We would later see what this, what this embedding layer do. Then this is sent to the LSTM network and LSTM creates the context from that vector. And that context is known as states or internal states of that model. Then those states are sent to the decoder model with the SOS or any particular token. And then it predicts the next word. And that next word is transferred to the decoder. And then again, it predicts the next word. And this cycle continues and this goes on. And now let's quickly see what uh, we have done in our previous three parts. And in the previous three parts, we have done all the data pre-processing we need. And now we have the data which is ready to be transferred to our model. If you don't know, please go ahead and watch those three parts because those are super necessary for this part. First of all, let us quickly make some uh, normal imports like dense layer and LSTM layer. These are obvious, we need to import them. And um, embedding layer, I will explain you later when we'll use this embedding layer. And one thing you might notice is that I'm importing model instead of sequential. Um, this is because uh, model is a functional approach and this gives us um, more control in our hands to um, optimize the layers or to use the layers wherever we want. Like we will need them during the inference. And so we are going to use functional approach instead of sequential approach. One thing I forgot to do in pre-processing part is adding this two categorical function to this decoder final output variable. Um, what this do is it converts the 2D data to 3D, which is expected for LSTM output. Um, it creates a separate column for every word in the vocabulary to the decoder final output variable. It creates a 3D matrix of so many zeros and so many ones. You can run this and see this. Alright, so once you have made all the necessary imports, let's create an input placeholder for encoder and decoder. And we would simply do by using saying input and giving it shape as a tuple. And uh, in that we will pass 13 comma none. And 13 means the length of input which we are going to pass in. So we will do this same for decoder. It basically holds the value which we are going to pass during the runtime or during the training time. Alright, so now let's quickly create an embedding layer. Um, embedding layer generally reduces the dimensionality. Um, we pass in input dimension which is um, the length of the vocabulary and uh, we need to give it an output dimension which we want to uh, reduce. So for example, in our case vocabulary size would be 3000. So it will going to um, compress that into just 50 values, 3000 values to 50 values. So it reduces the dimensionality. And we just give it three parameters. One is input dimension, output dimension, and input length. This is the length which we are going to give uh, give it during the runtime. And that is it. Now let me give you a quick example. Okay, so as in our case, the input shape would be a 20 comma 13, which, which is 20 is the number of the, the samples which we are going to pass in length of question and answer. And 13 is the length of one question or one answer. So once we pass this to embedding layer, this would give us 20 comma 13 comma 50, 50 the output dimension which we have set later when we, we were defining embedding layer. So quickly, why do we need to convert our 2D data to 3D? This is because LSTM expects the 3D data. So this is it for embedding. If you want further data, I link down this resource. And now it's time to connect our uh, encoder decoder placeholders with the embedding layer. It is as simple as just passing in them these braces. We will just say embedding and that braces and encoder input. And we would uh, later on do the same for decoder input. And now let's quickly create our encoder LSTM layer by simply saying LSTM and we'll name this as ENC LSTM. And the first parameter is the number of cells, LSTM cell. We will pass 400 for now and it takes return state equals to true and return sequence equals to true. Um, return sequence generally returns the um, hidden state at every time step and return state returns the hidden state and the cell state at the last time step. If you want further reading, go in the description and I would link uh, best reading which I found for this explanation. So now we will connect this LSTM layer with the encoder embedding in order to access the encoder output H and C. Uh, we are able to access SC, H and C due to return state equals to true, return sequence equals to true. So you need to set them to true if you want them. And now at last we will just create list of H and C by just saying in, by just uh, passing them to a list. And now let's add decoder LSTM. Um, 
it is just similar to encoder LSTM cell, but the thing is different is that um, we will use encoder state as its initial state of decoder LSTM as you can see in the diagram. And one more thing we have to change is going above in the vocabulary size, we have to add one instead of reducing one. This is because we are adding pad token extra in our vocabulary, so we have to tell it by specifying plus one in the vocabulary. And now let's create a dense layer by just simply saying dense and name this as the small d dense and uh, um, it will going to output the probabilities equals to the uh, vocabulary size and obviously we need probability so we will use the softmax activation function now we have dense layer now we will connect this dense layer with the decoder output in order to get the final dense output and now it's time to finally wrap everything up we will use model class in order to create model and uh, we have already imported so now it takes two arguments or two values which is input data and the output data input data is obviously encoder input and the decoder input and the output data is the final dense output so let's quickly replace them up and now at last we will compile our model by saying model.compile and setting the atom optimizer and categorical cross entropy as a loss and now at last we will fit our model on our pre-processed data and if you don't know how to pre-process data go ahead and watch uh, previous three parts and uh, we know uh, we had uh, encoder input decoder input and decoder final output as our pre-processed data so now let's quickly replace them up and we will use uh, 40 epochs for now now to run this code i will jump to kaggle because my laptop is not too powerful i will copy the code which we have just coded and that previous three part code pre-processing code over here as i've told you that vocabulary size so we will use length of vocabulary and that is it let's quickly run them up and for now i will just use two epochs just to show you that it works and at last to use this model we would have to create inference and this is something we are going to do in the next part and if you are wondering that why i didn't use attention layer and this is because i don't want i don't want to make this part complex so we will create attention layer in the future parts but for now for keeping the things simple i will just go with this simple model and i would like to stop this video at this point if you think that i am able to give you something useful please make sure you give this video a thumb up and i will see you in the next video